me and raise everything, the creator of everything, we believe. So, however, this term father, it caused, uh, it's an ambiguous term, it caused confusion. For, for in English language, when you say a father, mean someone who has a biological son, or someone who has a stepson, or someone that you respect, you call him a father, you see. But we don't apply none of this to God. God is our creator. That's why God called Moses in Deuteronomy, Moses is my Abd. Abd means servant, my slave. He's my slave, in the stand. So do you have anything that I can understand the relationship that God has to us? Is it like, like here an artist would create a painting? Is that what we are to God? No, we are to God. We are very special to God. If we believe in Him and worship Him alone, and we believe in Islam, there is no, our relationship with God, there is no mediator between us and God. Directly. I don't have to go, I don't have to go through Prophet Muhammad. Yes, Prophet Muhammad, likewise, we believe in Moses, Jesus, came to teach us how to have a direct connection with your Creator. So in Islam, we have a direct relationship with Allah. So, yeah, so I'm trying to understand what that relationship is. Is, is, is that we... What, what would we look at it that would be similar on earth? Yeah. Father, child. That I no, understand. We, we, not, we are servants, and it's our Creator that we worship Him, we follow His teaching, we love Him, and we hope that He will show us mercy and forgive us. So like a dog? No, so like a dog. No, like Moses and God. When God said to Moses in the Old Testament, he said to Moses, also in Ezekiel, he said, if you do wickedness, you behold and guess you. But if you turn away from your wickedness and you do good deeds, then your God will forgive you your wickedness and will give you everlasting. Everlasting here means paradise. So to God, to get paradise, you need the good deeds. When a young boy came to Jesus in the New Testament, he said, oh, a good master, what shall I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, why are you calling me good? No one good except God alone. He said, keep the commandments of God. So Jesus is being asked, the, 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 the true Messiah is being asked by the young boy, how can I get to the everlasting place, to the kingdom of God? Jesus never said to him, believe you're a son of God and you'll be saved. Or I'm going to die for your sins. He said, keep the commandments of God. Maybe you know, what is the commandment of God that Jesus was referring to? Well, either we talk about the Ten Commandments or we talk about that you should love God. No, it was the Torah. It was the Torah. Okay. So yeah, the Torah, yeah. The command is the law. It's the law. The Torah. So the Torah, and the Torah has what? Worship God alone. Love Him. Stay away from uh, paganism. Follow His teaching. So this, the, co the connection between the servant and God according to Jesus, teach it, and Moses and the old prophets and messengers. So we don't say like a dog. It's like between God and his creation. Okay, but that's what I'm saying, because like the creation, that's what I'm not under. It's okay. Just like the creation, that's yeah. what I'm, because it's different, like you have a servant and a master, they're both man, right? You have that kind of a, kind of a situation. So I'm trying to understand, just in the Islam faith, hmm what that relationship is, but it, you keep saying like it's a creator, so maybe it's not something that we can understand because I can't create something No, 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 I'm not saying you. Child. No, no, right? the, 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 the relationship between us and Allah mm -hmm. is that we follow his teaching. Through the prophets? What, Through the prophets and messages, yes. the prophets have taught us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how we so what is that connection you're talking about that Muhammad so has told me I can have with Allah? The most important thing most is to worship God alone, Allah without any partners, the way he wants. Which only comes through his prophet. As well yes. As yeah. Like in the Bible, out of respect, you don't have that. I'm sorry? In the Bible, you don't have that. Don't have how, that, to, worship. That, how to worship Allah correctly. But even though Jesus just told the, the young ruler to follow the commandments, which you said was the Torah. Yeah. Which no, is in the Bible. No, but uh, to, to mention to you something very, very important. As a Muslims, I don't believe everything that is in the Bible. Oh, I see. Okay? Put, put, as, as a Muslim, put, put Islam aside for, for a moment. You, what is in the Bible, we cannot trace it back to God. Why? Do you know why? Because Jesus spoke Aramaic, correct? Or Syriac? You know about? Yes. Okay, Jesus spoke to the, the, the historians differ. Hebrew? Hebrew, or, but Aramaic and Syriac, that time, that language was uh, widespread. That language we don't have anymore. The Bible that we have is in the Greek language, all right? Yeah. So therefore, they had to translate Jesus' teaching, okay? Do we know the translators? We don't know them. That's the first thing. If we don't know someone, can we trust them? If, we don't, if, I, if I, you don't know someone, can we trust him? We don't know him. I 
guess not. <laughs> guess not. So therefore, how can we trust the rise of the Bible if we don't know them? That's first. Secondly, when you come to the Bible, the earliest manuscript that we have, okay, it came 100 years after Jesus. Yes. Like Bart Ehrman, not just Bart Ehrman, even the other Christian scholars uh, mention that you have a copy of 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 the original one. So literally someone came 100 years after the original writers, even though we don't know them very well, saying to us, Jesus said this and that, but we cannot even trace it back. How can we trust them? How can you put your salvation and you want to be connected to God to a book that you don't know who wrote it? We cannot verify it. But when it comes to Quran, the Quran is very special because the Quran, one of the miracles of the Quran that Allah mentioned, that he made it easy to be memorized. That if, I always mention this, if the Muslims and the Jews and the Christians, all of them decide to burn their scriptures, the only scripture will remain with us is the holy book, the Quran. Why? Because the Quran, it has been memorized by the Muslim children, not even the scholars, yeah? But the Muslim children at the age of nine and 10, around the world. For example, all of us, we know the alphabets. A, B, C, D, E, yeah? I can write A, O, U, but I mean, no, 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 no. It's A, it's a B, C, because everyone memorized it, you understand? The Quran, a, the million of Muslims memorize the Quran. And the Quran has been recited even at the time of Muhammad openly in the mosques. Rather, we have a Muslim scholars, they job from the time of Muhammad to sit down in the mosque and to teach the Quran for 30 years, 40 years. Book like that will never be lost. You understand? That's why logically speaking, if the Bible is from God, how this book was not preserved, and we know why, Allah told us why the Bible was not preserved. Because Allah put the trust to the rabbis and the priests, but they were the first people to exchange it for money, you know? But when it comes to Quran, it's being preserved perfectly. So if, logically speaking, the one that has been preserved perfectly and the teaching makes sense, it must be from the Most High. So we don't have the correct teachings of Moses or Jesus? We do in Quran, not in the Bible. Okay. Yeah. For example... And those came through Muhammad? Yes. And so we, we don't have... But it's what Muhammad said that Moses and Jesus said. Yeah, and we can verify, and we can verify that Muhammad is a prophet of God because, for example, just to make something clear to you, when I say we don't have it, I'm not negating everything in the Bible is wrong. I'm not going to say that. There is like some truth to, to it, like worship God alone. And uh, before I come to the Quran and Prophet Muhammad, when it comes to the Bible, like I said, you come to the Old Testament, all right? The five books, the Torah, the Trinity, Genesis, Book of Numbers, Leviticus, and so on. Those books, the earliest manuscript that we have is 1,000 years after Moses. So someone came 1,000 years after Moses and he started telling us what Moses did and said. But the question we ask ourselves, who was that scribe? What was his name? Was he trustworthy? If he's a trustworthy, where did he get that information from? Because between him and Moses, 1,000 years. So now why we believe Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet and we accept because, you know, God creates us with something called universal knowledge. You know, as universal knowledge, we call it universal tools. Our sound reasoning. For example, if someone tell me God is perfect all the time, he has no beginning, no end, then he tell me God died, doesn't make any sense. Because if you say God has no beginning, no end, by default, he does not die. Do you agree with that? There's no beginning and no end, then he does not die. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's sure. If I say to you God is perfect in everything, he has a perfect knowledge, mean he, has, he, he was never ignorant. He has a perfect knowledge. Then I said to you, you know what? God doesn't know when the day of judgment will happen. I said, hang on, Shamsi. You just told me God knows everything. Everything. Then you tell me he doesn't know when the day of judgment will be established. Doesn't make any sense. So our sound, we don't need the scripture to tell me this doesn't make any sense. When you come to Islam, it goes in line with our sound reasoning. So for example, Islam came to preserve five things. That's why Islam is very special. That's why many people accepted Islam in our time especially in the Western world, yes? I'm going to explain to you why people accept Islam. Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? In Islam, worshipping God alone and following his teaching according to, according to his prophet is very, very important. That's why paganism, uh, polytheism, 
atheism is forbidden. Is yes, I'm speaking to her out of respect. I'm speaking what to her. Is okay, so uh, that's the first thing. You worship God alone, according to his teaching. Yeah. Secondly, Islam came to preserve intellect. Yeah, that's why Islam alcohol and drugs is forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth. That's why interest and gambling is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam came to preserve marriage life. That's why adultery and fornication is forbidden. Lastly, Islam came to preserve life. That's why committing suicide, killing people unjustly is forbidden. These five things Islam came to preserve, if we do preserve them, we will have a good society, a healthy society. If we do not preserve them, let us see. Alcohol, is it good for us or bad for us? Bad. Bad. Individually and collectively. Yes? Yes, some people do benefit from it. I will come to that. Now, uh, gambling, is it good for us or bad for us? Bad. Bad. Individually and collectively. Interest. Depends on which side you're on. Interest, yeah, of course. Like I said, <laughs> there, you're right. There are some people benefit from it. But majority of times, people are poor, have been suffered. Because what is interest? Interest, you are going through hardship and you need the money from me. So what I do, I utilize your hardship to manipulate you, to put you in slavery of interest. Imagine putting that on a big scale. So what I'm doing, I'm only benefiting from you and I'm utilizing you to make money from you without you even benefiting from it. Well, it depends on what you do with the money that you're getting though. No, the, it's like if you were to build a business with money that you get the interest on, then you grow faster than the interest payments. No, but remember, it's growing. No, but listen, you, do, you know when people put in interest, they know what they're doing. You know, do you remember the 2009 credit crunch? Credit crunch 2009? Yeah. So people were buying homes they couldn't afford? Yeah, what was it? Interest. That's the outcome of interest. Destroy society. Interest, what happened, makes the poor poorer, the rich richer. So it's not good for us. Because if you're in need of help, sister, what I have to do as a Muslim, Islam teach me, if your brother or sister need, they are in need of help, do not utilize the hardship to manipulate them. I will give you the money. And I said, look, give it, give it back to me when you can. And for Islamic teaching, if I forgive you, it's much better. You understand? So Islam teaches us what? Exactly as well. Yeah, you give it back well, exactly. It, it, there's two different kinds of taking out a loan. That's what right? yeah. I If you're just taking on consumer credit, my consumer my debt, because you can't afford to live, yeah. that's different than taking out a loan so that you could like grow a business or do something of that nature. But I'm from America, so we think yeah. this way. But it's the same thing. But, but same, same thing, one second. But it's the same thing, because why? What I'm saying, now, okay, for example, I have to buy a camera. Now I want to buy this, I want to buy that. Yeah, I want to be a, a business. But it's more like maybe, I will lose in my business. So what happened? The bank said, no problem. We're going to give you, we gave you five years and we told you, give us back $50,000. Now you cannot give it back in five years. We give you 10 years, but guess what? Give me $150,000. But guess what? It's a risk. Maybe. So what happened? Mentally, that's why there's a lot of suicide. Because I remember there's a guy, he committed suicide because of interest. He couldn't pay back. He went bankrupt. That's why there's more harm to it. There is benefit from it, no doubt, but there's more harm, you understand? Likewise, when it comes to adultery and fornication, destroy families, why? Destroy marriages, you understand? Now they done study in America and UK, majority of young people that commit uh, crimes, they come from broken houses. That's why Islam marriage is very, very important. So the point is here, how this man, Prophet Muhammad, uh, let me, before it comes to that. So why some people have problem with Islam even though this legislation that Islam came with, the five things, is good for us individually, collectively. Because there are some people out there, who are, who are those who are in power, they see Islam as a threat for, for their business. They are making money from the suffering of the people. And they know if people accept Islam, they will turn away from their business and they will go bankrupt. So what they do, because they have a lot of money, they utilize their money to make Islam look bad through the media. Even Islam is good for us individually and collectively. The other thing, how a man that existed 1,400 years ago, who was unable to read and write in the middle of nowhere, he's coming with his perfect way of life. On the other hand, we have these politicians who studied in the best universities around the world, yet they cannot resolve the problems you are facing. Because that man, he's a messenger of the Most High. And when the Most High legislates something, there is no evil desires involved or bias. Make sense what I said? What do you think? I do. Well, you're talking about like all these things aren't allowed, right? What, what was the word? Alcohol, you said? drugs. Yeah. So what happens when people do them? In Islam, there's punishment for it. Okay. So there's. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's. I think that's probably like the biggest difference because we start talking about a theocracy or we start talking about where things aren't allowed and it becomes a lot of oppression, 
right? People have fewer and fewer choices, and they're forced to live a certain way. No, that's not true, because why? In Islam now, when he said, you're not allowed to fornicate, you're allowed to get married. <laughs> no, understand? But when you're allowed marriage, to... Sorry, sorry. Uh, but when you're allowed, three hours, uh, uh, please. Three hours marriage, three three marriage. Three 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 three. Can you have marriage? some respect for the lady we're speaking? Marriage. Okay, no, not two hours. Marriage. It's only two seconds, marriage. Okay. The point here is that when Islam tell you to not have interest, where is it? Transaction, business, also helping people, understand? When Islam tells you to not drink, because alcohol is bad for you. There's other things. Islam teaches you to protect your soul, protect your health, protect your society. So but, but it, but it teaches but, us through punishment. Huh? It teaches us through punishment. Because yeah. there's some people, no, not all the time, because some people out there, nothing can stop them except by, by, by punishment. Because we have to be realistic to ourselves. We have to be honest to ourselves. How many signs everywhere, CC, it tells you on the shop, CCTV in operation, do not steal. Does people steal or not? They so steal. They so steal. So when God tells us to not steal and everything, some people, they will steal. So you're causing harm in society. So God, the most just, he will put a punishment for you. Why? To remove the, to remove the greater harm from society. You understand? That's why Islamic legislation, anyone has a problem with Islamic punishment, either they don't understand it correctly, or those who are criminals. Because when I was a criminal, before I become, started practicing Islam, I didn't like punishment. Why? I want Christianity teaching. God, Jesus died for my sins. For example, I didn't want to, by the way, because even that didn't make sense to me. But I'm saying, if someone tell me, do whatever you like, because Jesus died for your sins, I can forget what well, I'm a human being, I have desires. You understand? But Allah knows. He creates us. He knows there's certain human beings Nothing can stop them except punishment. But certain human beings... So why did, yes. God, why did Allah then create us that wants to sin? God wants to punish huh? you every time. What, but man wants to sin. Right? We see it all around us. People break laws, even though people Yeah, but know. that's what Allah forgive. So he for, Okay, he forgives. Okay, what saying, like with the creation, what is the point of us coming here in Allah's plan with the desire to sin? Okay. So what is that? It's I mean, a test for us. So that desire God gave you, God gave us, God we create angels. Okay, with the intellect, but with no desires. All right, God created demon with desires, as I say, no intellect. But God created us with intellect and desires. So, if you are a wise person, you utilize your intellect to control your desires. So Allah taught us is a test, and it makes sense why He created us with desires to sin because he, He's gonna test us. In order to test you, He has to give you that free will and that desires for you to to sin or not. But He never forced you. Understand? Wait, wait, wait. So God, sorry, so Allah created angels, yeah. man, angels, man, yeah, man yeah. and demons. We should call jinn. Yeah, we call it jinn. Okay. So, why did He create all three? And what is the difference, in, as far as my destiny in Allah's plan, as compared to an angel to, or compared to? To an be honest, you know, I have respect. Now, certain question would not benefit me. Like for example, if I don't know why Allah created angel, okay. that is not going to benefit me from Allah. Understand? For example, when you go to university. It's not conditional for you to know why the bathroom in the first floor, not in the second floor. That is not going to help you. Why is going to help you is for you to study and pass the test. That's what university. So you have to understand. We know, for example, Allah created the angels to follow his order, you know, to worship him. He created, he created different creations. You understand? Even humanity, same thing. That is the same thing. The point here is to go back to, I think we digress a bit, that when it comes to Islamic legislation, any person with a sound reasoning, reflect upon it, you will know this Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, he must be a messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. He must be the messenger of the Most High. Because whatever Islam tells you to stay away from, is bad for you. Tell me something Islam tells you to stay away from, and it's not bad for you. Tell me. Oh, I don't know. The five things I mentioned. No, the five things I mentioned. Sorry to call you, sister, yeah? I know I'm speaking a lot. You know, the, the, the five things I mentioned, Allah, in Islam, you know, is a principle in Islam. Islam came, the Prophet Muhammad came with the legislation, either to remove the harm or the evil completely, or to decrease the evil. That's the Islamic principle. For example, if I see people, if I see people smoking drugs, sitting down smoking drugs, if I know, if I know for sure, if I tell them stop smoking drugs, do go something, they will go start killing people, I will not do it. Why? Because there's two harms here. There's greater harm and lesser harm. Smoking drugs is a lesser harm. But if I tell them stop smoking drugs, because I'm sitting down, getting high, but if I tell them stop, go somewhere, they start killing people, then I have to look at which, if I'm going to cause greater evil or lesser evil. If I'm able to remove the both evils, then I do it. 
So Islam, this, this, the, the principles of Islam, that's why we say Islam is valid for every place and every time. Because Islam is based upon universal principles. You understand? So there's like, for example, abortion. Yeah? 